share screen. Okay, uh, there we go, slideshow, and we're off and running. Who's that handsome man there? I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, so welcome everybody. Thank you for being here. I really do appreciate it. As I've said, welcome to the Results Mastery and the Results Masterclass. That's what I call uh, this session. I've been running these now for um, really since the beginning of uh, January and they're part of my commitment, my aim which is going back near, coming up to 28 years now, I've been running my own business, helping and advising small businesses to improve theirs. Uh, and my aim has always been to try and help as many people as I can. And so I decided uh, I was gonna run these. Uh, we're gonna run them every two weeks. So if you know anybody in the future who would be interested in attending, by all means, uh, feel free to uh, point them in uh, the right direction. Uh, got a bit of an intro just to uh, just to kick things off. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about me um, to to start with. I, I won't go on too much, but uh, I come from a background which is a little bit weird, to be honest. I, I used to be many years ago before I did this a professional ping pong player, or as us ping pong players like to call it, a table tennis player. I played at international level. Um, I beat several of the top players in the world. I was full time. I played in the German Bundesliga for uh, Bayern Munich, um, the, as in the football club, which was a really interesting experience, playing ping pong for a football club. But uh, in the Bundesliga, all the football clubs have uh, table tennis teams, basketball teams and volleyball teams, as well as uh, football teams. So uh, it's a slightly different, more community-based uh, structure over there. Um, one of the things that I think that uh, has enabled me to, to be or, or do is to be very, very focused. You know, I, I really do... Um, I, I'm very passionate about how can you get more? How can you become better? What could you do to improve? Um, years ago, it was my forehand and my backhand. Now it's my website and my email and, and my uh, social media and so on and so forth. And that's what I, I'm good at. That's what I do. That's how I help people. I help people, uh, as the name implies, to get results, to master their results. And that, that's what I do. Um, how I learned all this stuff, again, uh, uh, quite an interesting. I've got no degree, no no real qualifications. I was too busy playing ping pong when I, left, when I was at school. And uh, when I got into marketing, I thought, right, who's the best in the world? Who's the, who's the world's leading sales, marketing, business development people that I could go and learn from? And I've literally spent in excess of £150,000 of my own money, not, not all at once, but over many, many years, um, at learning from the best in the world. I then take what I've learned and pass that on to my clients. I learn from other people and pass it on to the, uh, my clients. And my mission, uh, as I've already said, is to try and help as many, not just a few corporates, but as many small businesses as I possibly can. Um, results Mastery is my core program. That's the, the main thing that I'm doing right now. And that's a, um, a, a monthly program of business development. I will tell you a little bit about that at the end, but I do also want to respect my comment. Oh, we've got another person just arrived. Uh, I do want to respect my comment that uh, I'm not here to try and sell you anything. I've got nothing for sale today. Um, I will make a couple of offers. I'll tell you a little bit about Results Mastery, and I will uh, make you a couple of offers at the end. Um, those offers will be around uh, a free meeting, uh, which again is not a sales meeting for me. It's a one-to-one -one meeting for me to help you and to tell you a little bit more about Results Mastery. So perhaps you know enough to uh, make a decision decision as to whether it's for you or not and i fully uh re respect that um uh, today, what I'm going to be talking about is something I call the four steps to better results, which is like a little bit of my results mastery program and giving you a, a sample of it, allowing you the, the access to just sort of take a look at it. Emmanuel, hi, how are you? Good to have you here. Thank you very much for your time in being here. Whoop, uh, for some reason, I flicked over 
to slide number four. Hang on, we've had a technical itch here. I got carried away with uh, saying hello to Emmanuel. Um, oh, there we go. And uh, and skip forward there. So uh, apologies for that. So um, yeah, so uh, it's a four set process that I'm going to take you to you, through today. And I believe if you actually do. You don't just go, oh, yeah, that was interesting, and then go back to doing the same stuff. But if you actually carry this out, I think it will make a massive difference to your business. So please, you know, everybody tells me, and I've always found it to be true, that action speaks louder than words. It's, you know, gathering knowledge that you're going to do today is good, but it's only when you apply that knowledge, when you pick up the phone, send that email, do that social media post, uh, you know, improve your website. That's what's really going to get results for you and not sitting on a, a, a meeting like this um, unless you take action as a result of it. So um, that, that's really what today's about and, and what, what it's about, and what the whole concept of this results mastery about is about is if you look at the words results, it's not about brand awareness. It's about lead generation and lead conversion. It's about having a strategy in your business. It's about improving your customer care. It's about being better on the financial uh, uh, side of your business. Uh, you know, I want to be clear, this is not just like a marketing and sales uh service that we're talking about today uh it's a business development thing and and that's really what we need to try and apply in our business you know if we looked at all the key areas of business and worked out what can i do to improve that or to master it to become outstanding where i stand out uh we've got more than just marketing and just sales. They're two of the elements, um, but we um, we need to focus on all of them. Uh, five keys to, to su success. This is something I learned from a guy called Tony Robbins. I'm gonna explain it very quickly, but I think it's really cool because it's really simple. If you're gonna be successful, A, number one, you gotta know what you want. Without that, you know, you, you're never gonna really get anywhere. So you need to know what you want. B, number two, right? You've got to uh, take action. You need a plan to get you there. I know this is very obvious, but, you know, a lot of people know what they want, but they don't have a plan. They don't do anything. You know, they, they know I'd like a, you know, a new house and a bigger car and a this and a that and the holidays in these places, but they don't ever do anything towards it. So step two is uh, having a plan. Number three is noticing whether it's working or not. And this is something I'm always, always going on to about to my clients and prospects. Measure. You cannot measure what you do. You know, you, sorry, you cannot manage what you do, not measure. So you must measure your results because without that, how do you know what's working and what's not? You know, it's one of the biggest mistakes that I see in the world of marketing uh, where people are, are spending money, they're spending time, they're putting effort in, and they cannot tell me, you know, how many leads have you got this month? Where did they come from? How many of those did you convert into a meeting? How many of those meetings did you turn into a sale? That's the results that you need to be measuring. They're your KPIs, your key performance indicators in your business. So, you know, we, we need to know, step three is we need to know whether it's working or not. Now, if it's not working, which let's face it, we don't always get things right first time. You know, if I said to you on a scale of one to 10, how good are you at marketing your business? on LinkedIn, for example, um, you know, 10 being you win a phenomenal amount of money and sales on there, where would you rate yourself? Because whatever that is, it could be improved. So, you know, the, the next step is, is to think about how you can change your approach, what you're doing right now in each element. Today, we're talking about these four steps. Um, so in each element of the four steps, uh, how could you improve that? And the ma what, what Tony Robbins calls the magic fifth uh, uh, element is um, modeling success. 
Yeah, I was always taught at school, don't don't copy other people, that's cheating. That that was one of the worst bits of advice I think I've ever got. We can copy, not, not copy, I'm not talking about plagiarizing, nicking the words off their website and stuff like that. I'm talking about modeling success. You know, go and find somebody who's got what you want, do the same things, you get the same or similar results. So, you know, I, that, that's that's my old philosophy. I go and model people, go and find out what they're doing. These leading experts do the same things, get the same or similar results. Maybe it takes time. It certainly does. So, um, you know, that's really what I do. Um, and uh, as I've already said to you, you know, you cannot manage what you do, not measure is really, really true. So if you don't do anything as a result of today, other than uh, really start measuring your sales and marketing results, then, you know, I think today will be worth it if you just do that. So uh, let's uh, let's try and move on. So step one, this is this is step one. This is the thing that I want you to do every day. Step one is what I call crowd development. Right. If I asked you right now, how big is your database? You know, how many people you connected to on LinkedIn? How big is your email database? How big uh, are the people that you could call? How many of them are there? Because if you're like 90 odd percent of the businesses that I speak to, it's nowhere near what it could be. Let me give you an example. Let's say that I provide a service for hotels. And I work in the Portsmouth area, right? Now, I know that there are a thousand hotels in Portsmouth. And my target market, the, the job titles are hotel owners and hotel managers. They're the two people that I want to uh, be, be within my, my list, my database. So I know that there's 2,000 of those in Portsmouth. Um, my trouble is I'm only connected to 350 people on LinkedIn, and half of them are not people uh, who are hotel managers and owners. And uh, my email database has got 600 people in, and that's all. So the vast majority of my database is not being marketed to by me. They don't know me. They don't, therefore, they don't like me and they certainly don't trust me. And that's the key, I think, with marketing, getting people to know, like and trust you. And, and as it says there on the left, the biggest problem we all have in small business is obscurity. You know, we all know of Apple and Vodafone and so on and so forth. Uh, but, you know, I, I, you look at, uh, uh, you know, if I give me as an example, you know, I'm probably connected now to about 100,000 people, you know, uh, through social media, on my email and so on and so forth. Now, without being big headed, that's a lot more than most. Uh, but my target market, yeah, I wonder how big that is. I mean, there's three million businesses in the UK. And I'd love to be able to help all of them. I never will, obviously, but I'm constantly working on developing my crowd, the number of people in my world that know, like, and trust me. That is really, really important. Um, and we, we shall be working on that. So if you think about how you're going to do that, well, the truth is there's many, many ways. Um, you could use LinkedIn, other social media, networking events, referral partners, websites and so on and so forth. Now, I'd love on this webinar to be able to go, right, OK, this is what you need to do under all every single one of those things. Um, in reality, you know, that that's never going to happen. So what I, I'd like to ask you, and I'm, I'm going to be open to the first one who says something, is which one of those would you like me to focus on? Anybody? Anybody got a problem? Anybody not maximize their results from anything you can see there? Don't don't all rush at once. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we've got a volunteer, Sharon. Yeah, what, what... I mean, I, I know probably a lot of people think this, but I think I do. I think I do do all the things, and I do know all the things. Like a lot of things, I could be a triathlete if I only. Yeah. paid attention and did it so I suppose mine is execution in a focused um okay. almost I'm trying to do it always almost oh, as a bigger oh. business but, and but not pick, pick one and I want to try and help you with it yeah I can't I can't help you with all of it right now well I suppose it's the action I mean the act everything else leads from actually implementing and execution of the action but, but which action are we talking LinkedIn actions website actions? well I do it all 
I do it all. I know, but I can't help you with it all right now. I, I want you to pick one thing that I can help you with right now. LinkedIn then, let's do LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Okay, great, okay, thank you. Sorry, I, I probably didn't explain that as clear as I, I thought I had. But uh, yeah, okay, LinkedIn. So if you look at your strategy for LinkedIn, you know, there are several things that you need to do. You know, could you improve your personal profile on LinkedIn? Well, I know I could, and I think everybody here could. So that would be one thing that I would be talking to you about doing. Then we look at your company page. Could we improve that? Then we look at what is your strategy right now for this crowd development thing? How many people are you asking every day to connect? If you ask 10 people and six said yes, if you times back that by 365 days, you can see how many new people you're going to have at the end of the year. All right, maybe we're just doing it Monday to Friday. So there's whatever that is, 250 people or whatever it, it comes to. Yes. Yeah. Um, Laurie, yeah. Uh, the, the point is the quality of the people you're connecting with. Yeah, uh, we, we can all connect with as many people as we want. Yeah, that's a really good but the quality is key. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. It's not about bragging rights, is it? Aren't I popular? Uh, you know, I, I know people who've got 200 connections and uh, and they do really well on LinkedIn. I know others who've got 30,000 and they don't really, you know, it, it, it comes into the next thing. So, so what we need to do is, yes, develop our crowd, but then we need to develop the quality of our crowd. You know, we need to keep in touch with them. Are they the right people? You're absolutely right. And then next step is what are we doing to keep in touch with them? And, and, and out, out of all the things that you could be doing, the number one thing, in my opinion, that you need to do on LinkedIn if you want to win business is to do this. Pick up the phone. Yeah, pick up the phone. This thing here is 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 money on my phone. It says I don't really can see that there. Let me just see if I can show it here. Pick me up and I'll make you money. That's what it says on the front of my phone. And, and that is so incredibly true, particularly on LinkedIn. So you should be, in my opinion, you know, making yourself look good. That's like step one, company page, personal page. Then growing your crowd, connecting to more of the right people, uh, as, as said, and then communicating with those people we need to do that on an ongoing basis pick up the phone send them a message uh invite them to a webinar um you know sh show them your videos and and so on and so forth we need to be communicating with them uh in order you know assuming that your sales system is about getting a meeting then uh, uh we, we need to do that so you know no, no matter which one of those things uh you're doing right now my my advice to you is to is to think think about how you can do that better because believe me and i, I know this is the case because it just is we can always improve what we're doing take your website what are the two most important things to your website one is traffic the other is conversion You've got to get more people to your website and you've got to make your website better at converting. Doesn't matter how, I can say it doesn't matter how it looks, of course it does, but the, the two keys to its success are those. So, you know, how much time, money and effort have you put in to improving your website's conversion rate? What are you doing right now in order to get more traffic to your website? You know, we, we get over a thousand people to our website every month from LinkedIn. How many do you get? I don't know. But what I'm saying is if you put in effort into that, wherever I love this as a Tony Robbins, uh, he says, wherever uh, focus goes, energy flows. All right. Wherever, you know, if you focus on your website, then you're probably going to start winning business on it. If you focus on LinkedIn, That'll work for you. All this stuff works. People say to me often, they'll say, well, I tried I tried webinars. It didn't really work. I've done email marketing. Oh, YouTube, yeah, I've done that. But, you know, I don't ever win any business on it. What I do is I rely on referral and networking. And, and that is a self-limiting strategy, believe me. 
you know, because that means you can only win business from referral and uh, and networking. It means you're not going to win business from advertising on Google, even though that's probably one of the best opportunities that we've all got right now. It means you're not going to win any business from YouTube because you don't really have any videos and you don't really market those videos and so on. So for me, you know, I, I, what I'm trying to get you to, to think about here is, you know, perhaps writing a list of everything that you're doing right now and then putting a plan together. And perhaps we can talk about this in our meeting that we have on a one to one basis of how you can improve each and every element of everything that you do. It's just like in table tennis. You know, I've got to improve my backhand, my forehand, my serve, return of serve, my footwork, my fitness, my mental side of the game, my top spin, my back spin. They're all different elements of that thing that going to make a good table tennis player is exactly the same in business. And this is not just about marketing. You know, I could put a, uh, a you know, invoicing, uh, collecting debts, you know, customer service, you know, it, it's all the same that we need to try and focus on. I hope that makes sense. Uh, step two, then. Do you know what? This is, I love technology, don't you? There we go. OK, step two, make more offers. All right. Simple. Make more offers. You know, uh, uh, people say, oh, I don't want to be too pushy. I don't want to bombard people. Uh, I don't want to, you know be uh i don't want to you know basically you know be too salesy and i understand that but at the sa same time you know how many offers are you making how many offers have you made today you know uh how many offers have you made this week or this month we need i believe to be making more offers uh, what one guy that I, I I picked up on recently is a guy who uh, I've learned a lot from over the last six months, really, I suppose. It's a guy called Ted McGrath. Uh, he, he sent me an email, uh, sends me a lot of emails, by the way, almost daily. He's certainly making lots of offers. And his offer to me was buy this program. It was a YouTube program. Buy this YouTube program. It's normally three of $300, you can get it for $10 today. So I bought it. I thought, do you know what? And it was brilliant. It was really, really good. $10, unbelievable buy. It was a really good program, and it really helped me with my YouTube marketing. Um, he then, sure enough, uh, got one of his guys to phone me up and arrange a free no-obligation meeting. I thought, oh, shall I? And I decided I would. And I said to this guy, you know, what? why is he doing this? Why is he selling a $300 program that is definitely worth $300 for $10? He said, is that not just cheapening his brand and, you know, his expertise and so on? And he said, well, you know, you could say that. He said, but we, we're selling at the moment 7,000 of those per month, $7,010 programs per month. And out of those 7,000 people, 25% of them sign up to his $2,500 uh, uh, mastermind group. And I thought, wow, what, a, what a, an opportunity. What a, a way of doing it differently uh, uh, from other people. So, you know, my, my message to you here really is, is to consider what you could do to make a, an easier first sale. That the first sales always or often the hardest sale. Uh, what could you do to make that uh, more effective? So um, make more offers. Number three. Number three is to build more sales and marketing assets. What's an, uh, what's an asset? Well, you can see on the right-hand side, a script that you've got could be an asset, an, an asset. Your website is definitely an asset. Well, it's either an asset or a liability, one of the two. Uh, your your marketing materials could be assets. You know, your exhibition stand or your business card or your your videos. Yeah, I, I still market videos that I produce five, six years ago. One of, one of my videos, which is one actually on LinkedIn, uh, it's now got over 20,000 views and, and it's still winning views even years and years after it was produced. I think it could be as long back as, I don't know, 10 years ago even uh, that I did that video and it's still getting traffic. It's an asset. 
So if you think about what are your assets, you know, uh, your videos, uh, if you're doing videos, your social media adverts, their assets, testimonials, case studies, you know, uh, how many how many testimonials have you got on LinkedIn? Uh, how do you use them? How do you what do you do with them? Do you just leave them there and hope that people will look at them? Or have you turned them into a, a, a PDF that you can send out to people? Have you added them to your website? What have you done with or what do you do with your key assets? So make a list of them again and work out what you need to do in order to try and improve them. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah I'm getting lots of nods. Good. That's good. That's what I like to hear. And last one, create goodwill. Create goodwill. I know this is an obvious one again, but I want to talk to you briefly about this book. I want to encourage you to go and buy it. It's brilliant. I'm not on commission. It's called Influence, the Psychology of Persuasion. Uh, it's written by a guy called Robert Cialdini, who's a professor, I think, from Harvard. Um, and uh, he wrote this book and he said that there are seven keys to uh, influence, seven keys to being better at influencing people. One of them uh, is reciprocation. People help people uh, who help them help them. So if I help you uh, by running this free webinar, it's more likely, I believe, uh, that you might help me by maybe recommending somebody who comes on to the webinar or maybe referring a client to me or perhaps sharing a post on LinkedIn because we have started that process of building our relationship a little bit. Does that, again, make sense to you? Yeah. So so we, we need to think about what is your plan for inducing and increasing the amount of reciprocation that you get. One of the things I like to do is to send people a book. I've actually got one over behind me there that I'm sending out to a new client. So I send them a new uh, a book. Uh, it's one of these, actually. Uh, and uh, I've got like 20 of these in stock at the moment that I send to people. So I'm not, not really promoting myself, although I am through reciprocation. Uh, next one is commitment. Commitment's about, co I suppose, I, th I think actually commitment and consistency are very, very similar. So what does it mean? It means being clear on the perception of, of you. So, you know, if if I come, you come to me and I tell you, look, I'm I'm one of the one of the UK's leading marketing people. And you go to my website and it looks like, you know, I'm, you know, rubbish. Let's put it that way. Uh, and I give you a copy of my business card and it's a cheap old tacky rubbish thing. And then uh, you look at my LinkedIn profile and it's half finished. You know, there's no no commitment from me. There's no consistency in my brand. Or, you know, you go to my web, website, um, that looks one way, and I give you my business card, and there's no consistency between the two. The brand's just not there, you know, and uh, you know, it's so important. People, why do people buy McDonald's? Because it's consistent. We know exactly what we're going to get, even though what we're going to get ain't great. We still go there because it's consistent. Next one, liking. Uh, I can't stress to you enough again. People buy from people that they know, like, and trust. They buy from people that they know, like, and trust. And they also buy from companies that they know, like, and trust. And they buy products and services that they know, like, and trust. So th that, in a way, is our job, isn't it? As, as business owners, as marketers, we've got to get more people knowing, liking, and trusting me. Um, next one, authority. Of authority. I've got I've got a level of authority here in so much that people have turned up to listen to me, which is very nice of them to do so. Uh, but you know, I need to try and improve that. You know, and I need to be working on that. So what am I going to do? Well, I could write a book. I've written four books already on marketing, but I could write another book. I could do a, a video that might help position me, dependent on what I say on the video. OK, I could write a report on something. I could I could go go to a networking event and stand up at the front as 
the the expert that people have come to listen to. We've got 50 people in the room and, and they're all here for this networking event, but I'm the speaker or you're the speaker. Uh, and that's how you use authority or certainly some of the ways you use it. And the last one, again, I, I'm not, not a massive fan of this, and I think you need to be sincere with it, but scarcity. You know, scarcity is around, you know, the last biscuit in the tin. I've only got two places left on this seminar. Uh, this offer finishes on Tuesday. You know, it's phrases like that that, you know, may or may not help you, uh, you know, moving forward in your business. So uh, there you go. So um, if you think about, you know, the consultancy, the training, I know quite a few people here are in this industry, you know, uh, consultancy, training, coaching, advising, uh, what I loosely call like the, the helping industry. Um, the only stat there that is true, I believe, is that less than 75% uh, uh, of consultants, coaches, advisors, and so on, earn less than 30 grand a year, which is startling. It's terrible. Isn't that, you know, bloody heck, that, you know, that is not good. The rest of it, I've just made up. Uh, it, but it's based on no research whatsoever. But I wanted to tell you that, but I don't think I'm far out. Uh, I really don't. So, so my question is to you is, you know, I, are you wherever you are on that, what are you doing to raise your game? What are you doing to try to improve the results that you're already getting? Because you know that that is a that is a pyramid that we should, I believe, all be working our way up. Dependent on where you want to go, you might not want to be a mil multi millionaire. You might go. Do you know what? If I could hit the hundred to two hundred thousand mark i'd be reasonably happy nothing wrong with that at all unless you're on the 30 grand un, under 30 grand mark then you know that's something to work for um so um just wanted to pull that up for you oh again we've gone past so if you think about again your business looking looking at it a little bit more direct what are the strengths? What are the strengths in the business right now? We've all seen SWOT analysis. Um, what, are, what are your strengths? What are you good at? Um, what are your weaknesses? Threats, opportunities. Um, you know, it, it's a, a, a great little model, this, I think. I know, I know it's been around since year dot, but, you know, it's still as effective today as it was back then. And uh, just thinking about that, um, I think it is is definitely worth doing. And again, you know, if you want to work with me on a free one to one meeting and talk about uh, maybe doing a SWOT analysis together of your business, or perhaps you come with a SWOT analysis that you've already done, so we can discuss uh, how to maximize your strengths, uh, how to uh, look at your weaknesses, and maybe form a plan to overcome them or improve them. Um, maybe come with two or three opportunities that you see right now and you'd like to work on and maybe even talk about some of the threats that you're facing right now in your business um, but my uh, objective as I've said is to try and help you and to explain a little bit uh, about this process um, called results mastery so in summary really if you think about you know where you are you've got you've got a bunch of people right now you got, you got clients you got prospects you got former clients and so on and uh, if you took a, a straight line between this person here perhaps they've connected on linkedin or they've you met them at a networking event um and you're at the other end they they've become loyal ongoing customers who rate you recommend you think you're great they're what I call raving fans you know they're not just satisfied they're raving fans um you know we we need a plan to move people along that so if you again if you look at what is your plan for getting traffic and making offers to people you know we we've already said that you know LinkedIn is a great place to do that absolutely we know referral is a good way of winning business uh, but if I asked you, what is your referral marketing plan? Would you be able to tell me? Would you would you have that written down? 
could you show it me? You're getting some nods, yeah? Good, good. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's really good to hear. But if you haven't, and, and you did, that could increase the amount of referral business. Yeah, how many people have you phoned this week and asked for a referral? That's a really good question. Um, so we need to do that. We need to get people to a level where they're communicating with us. You know, I, I've, I've got, you know, uh, there's only, what, five people on today. Um, but there are five people now that I submit that know, know, like, and trust me a little bit more. I hope so, anyway. Either that or they think, you know, this guy's clearly a mad axeman and, you know, uh, we'll be <laughs> hopefully finishing soon. Uh, I hope that's not the case. You've all stayed. That's a good thing. So thank you for that. Um, but, you know, what seriously, what we've got to be doing is getting conversations back. That's the key. You know, connecting to somebody on LinkedIn and, and growing that database is all very well. But what I need is to connect then start communicating with them. And then here's the, 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 the real key is getting them to come back and communicate with me. Because if I'm just pushing stuff out to them, you know, do you want, here's this, here's a video to watch, here's a report, here's some more. Let me try and sell you this. What's going to happen? Pretty quick, people are going to get very fed up with that sort of behavior. So until and unless I get something back from them, that's when I can start developing the next step, which is creating interest. And I, I think, you know, if you ask me what, what are the you know, main reasons that businesses don't market themselves as effectively as they could, uh, there are probably many, many reasons. But, but certainly one of them is I think they try to sell too soon. I get all the time on LinkedIn. I connect to somebody and then literally 30 seconds later, they send me an email that's about that long, which there's no way they've written in 30 seconds. It's an automated email um, offering, me, offering me something. And, you know, I just think, what you know, you don't know me. You've no knowledge of me, of what I do or what I um, you might know what I do, but you don't know my needs. Why, do, why don't you pick up the phone and call me? Why don't you send me an email saying, you know, I don't know, how's business or something like that in order to try and get some form of communication back from me? You know, I, I just think people are missing the boat here. Uh, you know, selling to strangers is really difficult. I sometimes use a, a bit of a story that I, I wouldn't go in the street and, and go up to a load of ladies, assuming I wasn't married, which I am. But if I was single, go, up, oh, hi, my name's Steve. Would you marry me? No? Oh, all right. And I'll go and ask somebody else and go and talk to a different person. That would be stupid. Nobody would do that. Um, but we do it all the time in business. We go up to strangers and go, would you, buy, would you buy this? And they go, well, no, I don't need it. How do you know what I want? How can you try and sell me something until you know what I want? So, you know, I think that's really important. And then once you get them on board, you know, the, the job, again, a great book called Raving Fans, Ken Blanchard. I've not got a copy here, I don't think. I'm just looking on the shelf there. No, I haven't. It, I think it must be in my house in the other room. Um, but, um, you know, it, it's it's a great book and well worth buying. It's called Raving Fans. Why satisfied customers are not what you want. You want raving fans. Raving fans are people who you, you work with. They think you're great. They're, you know, you think they're great. There's a great relationship. They recommend you. Uh, they're good to deal with and so on and so forth. And, and what we need is a, again, a plan, a strategy to create raving fans. Does that make sense? OK, so the question is, what are you going to do? What are you going to do as a result of today? Uh, I, I hope it's not the first one, nothing. Uh, but if it is, you're probably going to get no difference. That, that's the key. You know, uh, until and unless you take action, uh, you know, uh, hoping is never a good strategy. Hoping things will get better, hoping that you will get more referrals 
hoping that going to that networking event is going to start winning your business. I was talking to a guy the other day. He said, oh, yeah, yeah, I go, I go to no, nothing against 4N. It's I go to 4N. He said, it's really good. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I've been going there a year now. I said, oh, right. How much business have you won? Well, I haven't won any. You know, so you've been going for a year every week and won no business. No. Well, it ain't that good then, is it? Uh, certainly not for you. And uh, please, I'm not knocking 4N. That's the, the, that's him, not 4N. He, you know, his strategy is going to what is a good place to get business, but it ain't working. You know, uh, and, and there could be a whole variety. Of, why doesn't networking work? Well, people turn up without a plan, without a script, uh, without business cards. Uh, they don't, they're often in front of the wrong people. Uh, they don't follow up, and that's the big one. Uh, you know, how many networking events have I been to and you been to where you've met somebody, you've had a good relationship, a good contact, and then never spoken to them again, never followed them up, never picked up the phone and go, oh, hi, it was great to see you yesterday, or even today, because you phoned them, you know, an hour later. Um, it just, you know, it, it just hope is not a good strategy. So um doing nothing uh, i hope is not an option um my offer as i said one-to-one -one meeting with you and i'll also do a website video report for you if you if you if you want the meeting i'll do a website video report it, it, it's it's short it's based on your your home page but what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a look at your home page and I'm going to do a video and I'm going to tell you what I think of the strengths, weaknesses, things that I'd improve uh, or, or sorry, not not necessarily me, but I'd recommend you need to improve on your website in order to improve your conversion rate. Because that's that's really one of the big things with websites. They, they don't convert, at least not to the level they could. So if you want that offer, uh, please let me know. If you're interested in talking to me about results mastery, there uh, uh, under number number three, there the third one along results actions. That's what we focus on in our groups. So we have uh, strategy, sales, marketing, finance, people, customers, and systems. Um, when I say groups, uh, I run a a, a Wednesday group, uh, a, a masterclass. Um, you get an online marketing plan. You get marketing training. I've got a, um, a member portal uh, where you, you gain access to all my systems, all my reports, all my um, scripts and email campaigns and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, it, it, it is it is really, really good. And, and my members get fantastic results. Um, uh we we in in the in the in the meeting if we did get together uh we're going to talk primarily about where you are where you want to be where you want to be and how you're going to get there and i'm going to help you put together an initial 30-day plan uh, uh, to get there so uh, last thing i want to say on this is you know if you think about your business from a uh, a business growth point of view uh, and I'm just going to show you another book because I like showing you books because I read them and uh, recommend them. Uh, this book is brilliant, by the way. I actually uh, would go so far as to say there should be a rule in this country where you're not allowed to start a business until and unless you've read The E-Myth. It's by a guy called Michael Gerber. In my opinion, it is the best business book ever it's got a subhead why small businesses don't work and what's what to do about it it really is a brilliant book and one of the things that gerber talks about in there uh, is something that he calls innovation quantification and orchestration i'd like to just explain a little bit about that so innovation is the changing and improving of any element of your business so again, if I look at this from a, let's look at it from a sales point of view, shall we, instead of a marketing point of view. If I asked you, what is your sales system? Um, what what would it be? You know, when, when a lead comes in, this happens. Then what happens next? Then what happens after that? 
and after that, and after that, and after that, and after that. Now, for many people, the, the system is like three things. You know, we, we email them, say, thanks for your lead. We'll call them up. And if they don't answer, we'll call them again. And if they don't answer, then we'll send them an email and then perhaps call them again. And then and if they still don't answer, then we're just letting them drift into our database, maybe, or maybe never speak to them again. Who knows? So my question is, and, and the point of innovation is, how could you improve that? What could you do? So one of the things I do, for example, is I send them my testimonial PDF as part of that process. I send them a book. I've already told you that. So I'm trying to induce the law of reciprocation, and I'm trying to position me as, as an expert in my industry, because my PDF has got over 150 testimonials in it, 150. I'm saying that not to impress you, to impress upon you. There's no reason why you couldn't do that, or at least get a PDF with 10, 15 testimonials, perhaps a couple of case studies. You could do that by the end of February. Uh, and again, that might be a, a, a useful thing to do. So quantification, again, we go right back to the beginning of this uh, uh, meeting. Quantification is the measurement. I, I can't stress to you enough. You know, if you're going to change something, then we need to prove we need to get proof. If you're going to go and do, you know, Google AdWords, one of my clients, let me just tell you this, this really quick story. One of my clients uh, came to me and said, I, I want to do Facebook advertising. So I've got a thousand pound a month budget. And I said, well, let, let's kick off a little bit lower than that. So I don't want you wasting money on stuff that doesn't work. So we started off with 10 pound a day, 10 pound a day into Facebook advertising. And uh, on the first week, he got a, an ROI uh, of about 50%. So every, every 10 pound he, he spent every day, he was getting a few leads and it was just about profitable. So what did we do? We went to innovation. We changed the headline on the advert. We changed the words. We improved the call to action. We went to the landing page. We improved the headline and the words and the, we added a video and we improved the call to action on that. Long story short, uh, we, got, we got him to a level where he was getting a 10 to 1 return on investment. We'd nudged up his marketing budget to a, a level where instead of spending uh, 10 pounds a day, he was now spending uh, 30, 30 grand a month. He was spending a thousand pound a day, 30 grand a month. And um, he was making just over 160,000 pounds a month. Spending 30, getting 160. He had what I call proof of concept. And that's what you need. You need proof of concept in each and every element of your business. Now, he came to me and said, what do you think I should do? I said, I, I, I think you should spend 60 grand. Why, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you just roll it out? Can you cope with that amount of business? Oh, yeah, he said. So he started spending 60 grand. And, and he, didn't, he didn't quite double his business, but he nearly did. You know, once you get that proof of concept, once you know that, that by picking up the phone and asking your current clients for a referral, you're getting one referral every five calls or whatever your number are, then you've got to work out how you can improve that. Again, does that make sense? This is all stuff, I, as I say, I've learned from, you know, some of the, the, the world's leading sales and marketing people. And I, I teach that. I talk about marketing. I talk about sales. I talk about finance. Although I've got to say, I'm not an accountant in any way. And I've probably made more of the financial mistakes than, than everybody else put together. I don't know. But um, uh, customers is something I'm really passionate about. And I can definitely help with that. And then, you know, strategy systems, making sure that we've got systems in place and then looking at your people. My dad, my dad always said to me when I did start in business 28 years ago, you're only as good as the people that work for you. 
and and that is still as true today as it was back then so um so that's it that's all i've got to tell you if you want to book a meeting you're very welcome and i'm open to any questions sorry i i did say i was going to ask you loads of questions and i've just waffled on to get things through uh, you know without you saying very much so now's your opportunity you are unleashed well, well, let's start by saying what did you take from that anybody Brilliant. Lovely. Oh, uh, I, listening to you, I always have, and uh, we're on exactly the same lines. I don't think anything you've said uh, I, I disagree with or, or, or could add to. That's, right. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. Any any questions about anything, you know, that you're doing that you think I could help with? I, I'm, not, I'm not talking about paying me money. I'm just paying what I'm helping you now with. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 think, uh, no, <clears throat> I think that was really 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 helpful um and my take out is that common sense isn't common because yeah. a lot of it is common sense but i'd be the first person it is. it's common sense it's not yeah. common practice you know yeah. people don't measure everybody knows no. you no i don't I, I, I think the benefit i think of, of working with someone like yourself is um well in my case because i'm working on on my own it's kind of like, yes, I go to the gym every morning now, but there have been periods when I haven't, right? <laughs> and I freely admit that. And and, and I think, you know, it, it, it's just of enormous value being accountable to someone and making sure that you're ticking all of these boxes. Yeah. Uh, and I think in particular, what you were saying at the end about innovation is like, um, actually, there are lots of things I'm sure I could do better, but I actually need someone on an ongoing basis to work with to figure out who that is, or I'm just in an echo chamber. So um, I, I kind of thought, to, uh, just kind of going back to your ping pong stuff, I think the phrase raise your game is really useful. So I kind of, what my take out from it is to go thinking about all the different bits of my business. How would I? raise the game in each area and then which one of those things do i think is the most likely to yield results and then try them yeah so I, I just think there's a lot of benefit in in um just there's a huge benefit i think in, in having close proximity to someone who I, I, I do, yeah, yeah brilliant thank you jake um i do think there's a very very close correlation between success in sport and success in business or even like success in health you know going down the gym if you go down the gym and just do curls you know just doing curls is like just doing networking you know it, it, it's going to build that arm but there's only so much you know, there's only so much success, you know, unless you're eating that many breakfasts that you, you know, <laughs> you, you're probably going to, you know, explode before you really get your business to where you want it. So you've got to do multiple things, you know, you need to do, so, you know, other things down the gym in order to get fit. You know, uh, if, you, if you're going to play football you know you've got to you've got to be good at multiple things all right you might be a specialist in one area and i do think that's of, of value uh but you know you, you you need to think about multiple things laurie yeah consistency is my big bugbear people are not consistent they dip and they dip out they dip in and dip out just to no. be consistent yeah yeah I, I hear all the time or are you I wish I it's one of those sayings. I wish I got a pound for every time somebody had said something like, Oh, I've tried LinkedIn, but it doesn't work. Or I've done pay-per-click advertising, it was a waste of time. And what they what you know, no, no, no matter it's almost like no matter what it is, marketing works, but it doesn't work all the time. And it, you know, it, it if you're gonna be if you're gonna spend money on on Google AdWords, go and get good at it before you spend money what people do is they stick a you know set the the campaign up let it run and and then a month later they look and they think well that that's not really created anything what a waste of money that is i'll stop doing that i'll go off and do facebook advertising and they waste a lot they, they're what i call marketing butterflies you need to stick at it and you can't stick at everything you know and and being for you know if i said to you you know which i did right here's a list of all the things that you need to perhaps get good at but i'd say 
let's get good at one or two of them to start with. Let's become, you know, really high level at LinkedIn or at email or, at, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, Jay, sorry. No, that's all right. So no, I've, I've got to disappear now, but just okay. on no worries. Keep time. I suppose the, the biggest question that I can never quite resolve is given it's just me and a small team is how to use my time better and that's it's there always seems to be there always seems to be an argument for doing more yeah but it's harder to have an argument for doing yeah. that because if you decide you can do something else it's one of the biggest problems you've got to go, right okay a really good friend of mine a guy called peter thompson some some of you might know he says this uh, it was great advice, I think. He said, write a list of everything that you do. He said, then get another piece of paper, divide it into three columns. At the top of the left, write the word, write 10 pounds. In the middle, write 100 pounds. On the right, put 1,000 pounds. And then put all your tasks into either a 10 pound task, a 100 pound task, or a 1,000 pound task. Your next job is to stop doing the 10 pound tasks. You've got to get if you if you've got a job like bookkeeping, all right, might be 15 pound or whatever. But if you've got jobs like admin stuff and stuff like that, that you're paying, you know, you, your pay, your company is paying you. You're a very expensive admin person, you know, and you've got to just get out of the 10 pound task. That's all I can say, really. <laughs> That's my my advice. And and I'm still working on it. You gave me that that instruction two or three years ago. Uh, but I am trying to get out of doing those 10 pound tasks. Uh, or do what Peter does or do what Peter does and automate it and pays other people to do it for him. Yeah, you just yeah, that, the expensive yeah, stuff. You go and get somebody to do it for you. And, and these days, there's so many opportunities. Yeah, you need to go, Jake. That's all right. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> OK, uh, if we've got no more questions, uh, it just remains me to to thank you ever so much for being here. I do appreciate it. Um, I hope and believe um, you've got some value from it. Uh, but again, you know, just to reiterate, it's all about what you do, not what you learn. You know, uh, again, to quote Tony Robbins, Tony says, uh, knowledge is a waste of time. The application of knowledge is everything. Uh, you know, that's what's going to get your results. Don't forget to book that meeting. I'd love to talk to you on a one to one basis. Um, I'll send you a link uh, that you can do that or just go to my web. If you go to my website, there's like gold buttons and each of them, if you click on it, gives you access to my diary. Like a, it's like a calendly thing that I've got. Um, you can book a time that com is convenient to you and we can have a chat. I promise no hard sell. Uh, we'll talk about your business and I'll tell you about results mastery. And if you go, do you know what? Um, it's not for me, Steve. I go, that's fine. And if uh, you go, I'd, I'd love it, then get yourself signed up. We've got members who are doing fantastic. Uh, Jackie, actually, who's here today, is working. Both, both Jackie and myself uh, work, work with, with one of them. Uh, we, we're like we've got a, a shared shared client, haven't we, Jackie? And, uh, and he's doing fantastic. He's a startup. Started about three, four months ago, something like that, perhaps longer, actually, maybe six months ago. And uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's doing really well uh, between both of us. So we're both helping him. So uh, um, that's really good. Here's a quick question for you, Steve. Yes. Um, for my sins, I'm a marketeer, chartered fellow. Oh, done it all my life. And that's <laughs> one of the biggest issues because everything you said, I totally agree with. Totally understand, totally recognise. I'm not saying I've got all the answers to all of it, but I agree with everything you've said. And I've also agree with what other people have said about it's where do you focus, where's your time? And I agree with that, the £10, the £100, whatever. But actually, it does all need doing. Yeah. And whilst you're trying to work out what is going to be, not the magic button, there is no silver bullet, it's no. a combination. And I work in a position and have done for many years where attribution if only we knew which half was a waste of time we'd stop doing it right yeah, yeah the old henry Ford. So we know all that and i hear what you're saying because accountability and focus is really clear and, and 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 actually i think one of the biggest thing is being able to go i'm going to ignore everything else yeah and only do what i think yeah but you are actually basically asking people to go up to that roulette wheel and go i'm going to put my number on red and i'm going to keep doing red but when, and the reason why everybody, and I agree with you, everybody's always said to me in all my marketing, I've sold marketing solutions all my life in various different sophisticated platforms or whatever. Okay. And it's always been, it didn't work. 
And you're right, it didn't work because they either did it wrong or didn't do it long enough or they were yeah. the wrong person doing it. So yeah. with the greatest respect, it's exactly not that your, your time would be valuable, but I haven't got time to spend with somebody else who knows a bit more about me in this area, but not the same about me in that area, whereas actually I need somebody that's going to physically beat me up if I don't do what I've agreed to do that I believe is the right thing to do. I love that. And I'd have to pay for that. I mean, that's the gym. That's a personal trainer. <laughs> well, yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, one, one of the things that when, when people come on my results mastery, I say to them, look, I want, I want, one thing I want to be really clear about, I want nagging rights. In, in fact, what I've done is I've set up an online marketing plan for all, all the all the members. They've all got their own individual marketing plan, and and, uh, and it's all online. So I can go on into their plan. I'm the only one of them them's allowed in there. And I, and I go in there and I go, you were going to do this yesterday. Why have you not done it? And and so I I, I really stress that well, I want nagging rights. I want to be able to nag people, and that's what people well one of the things people get on the results mastery and they all turn up on wednesday morning uh and i go right okay results talk to me what have you done this week um what results did you get how many meetings where did those meetings come from how many of those turned into sales go first one does it and the, these are small groups these are like uh i mean the 15 at, at the max the, the wednesday one i've got 12 members so we got three places i'm using uh scarcity here aren't i but i'm not meaning to it is true <laughs> um and um yeah so i i agree we all we all need that we all need you know when in my table tennis days i had coaches i had my dad you know, give me give me a kick up the backside when I didn't do what I was supposed to do and what I knew I had to do. We all need that from time to time. So, um, yeah, I understand. And, you know, if you want me to be that person for you, I'm very happy to do that. But uh, um, anyway, um, but but really, really good point. Really good point. It, we, we all need somebody there, whether that's a coach, an advisor, somebody to make sure that we do what we say we're going to do. I, I just think it very much depends on your audience varies greatly as to what their experience and knowledge is and, and what they can and can't do. My problem is I know too much that's and it stops problem. me. That's the problem. And, yeah. and I've jumped on lots of different solutions where I've then kind of gone, do you know what? I haven't got the time to follow their program when I've already got all this this knowledge but the other the group doesn't so it's not a criticism I'm sharing it with you really because yeah. and then I advise people to do what you're what I would be doing with you yeah, yeah. that's yeah. the irony it's almost like I'm a decorator that's got a shit house you know yeah yeah, yeah. well you know I I I I totally agree, you know. Um, if, but 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 I think that's a challenge for me. You know, I do my blogs, I do my website. I've got, you know, and it isn't about numbers, but I have got a lot of engaged people. I've grown a big network, a big, you know, I'm, I do reciprocity. I've done that all my life. I do it naturally. All the things you talk about, I do. Yeah. But I'm not, as I keep saying to everybody, it's it's that um, Eric Morecambe. I play all the right notes. Not necessarily. It's not necessarily in the right order and i even did a post about that a couple the, of weeks the ago the only thing i could say with that is um you know to try and help you is uh you know per perhaps it's worth thinking about yes we're going to do all these things but what we what we we're, we're going to do going forward is we're going to focus on one thing on one thing and we're going to get really really good at it and um you know whatever that is for you i don't know because i don't know your business i understand yeah um, okay and and just get really good at that and then go and find another one and get good at that one you know because uh, we can't be good at everything we can't go oh, i'm going to be really I agree. good i'm 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 that good at a lot of things and i want to be really good at yeah. less things you're, you're much better i think being being outstandingly good at one thing um yeah well I, only if that one thing's wanted let's be honest yeah. I, I the sweet thought, spot is where it all comes together. It's wanted. I might be brilliant at it, but nobody wants to buy it. Lady, they, yeah, it's no good. Lady, lady that I met on, on on Peter Thompson's workshop, actually, uh, I was one of the speakers talking about LinkedIn, and she stood up after me and said, "Hi, I'm Kerry Green, and uh, I I've done a couple of things that I wanted to tell you about. I've managed to get 180,000 Facebook followers." Um, and I've sold 38,000 of them into my uh, female entrepreneur club. 
and uh, he said they'll pay me thirty-five pound a month. And I, I got on my mobile and I went, and I, I remember it to this day. I looked at her, looked down, looked at her, looked down, and I thought I must have put a, a, a too many digits in there. So I went again, thirty-eight thousand times thirty-five pounds. And I think it came to one point, was it, I can't remember now whether it was 1.2 or 2.2 million. I think it was 1.2 per month. And I'm thinking, my God. And that's, she said, and that is just from Facebook. So she's, she's not bad at Facebook, is she? She's done that reasonably well. And other, yeah. people, other people tell me, you know, Facebook doesn't work. That's not for business. I get LinkedIn, but Facebook is not for business. Anyway, let's uh, let, let's draw a line at that. Uh, and uh, again, thank you for being here. And uh, if you want to book a meeting, do. Uh, if not, no problem at all. Thank you okay, very thank much. Thank you for your time. Have thank you, you. Got a minute, Jackie? I just wanted to have a word with you about something. Is that all right? Okay. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Okay. Bloody hell! How do we only get five people? Have you got? I can't hear you. Can't hear you, Jackie. Still can't. Yeah. I can only stay five minutes because okay. I'm going to go yeah, and do yeah. something. Yeah. Um, okay. And I've written down some feedback. But the thing is, see, like, I'll just give you a quick bit of tip. Um, don't worry about not having many people because. It's whether the people there, yeah, all you need is a few, like you don't need this thousands of people no, sitting I there. I know, I know it makes it look more successful, but if the people in the room potentially could be candidates for that, um, and I wrote down, there's, there was a couple of people that I think could be, and mainly the, is it Jake? Um, whoever yeah. said, I need accountability, um, the guy yeah. that disappeared early, him, and maybe that lorry, I don't know. Um, and maybe the other guy, like, I think maybe, even though you had only a small number, yeah. they possibly could be candidates for it. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't go give beating yourself up, oh, no, I no, didn't no. get enough. Because also, if you've got the recording, people can have the recording. Yeah. Oh, I am. They've still got leads. I, um, I mean, there were quite a few. I